the Joe Rogan experience. Not long after that, in February, in the middle of February, the caribou showed up that year. And I got uh, five caribou at one time out on the island on the lake. And then, you know, we were all set again. We were Feast of famine. Yeah, it is. It's like a hungry country, but um, there are a lot of animals, but they just, they're different places. You can fly over the Arctic all day long and not see hardly anything. Like yeah, that's the weird part about it, right? You would think there's animals everywhere. No. It's almost like a desert. It is. It's like the Sahara Desert up there a lot of times, but there are a lot of animals concentrated. The caribou are concentrated. There's herds of 100,000 caribou. but 100,000? Yeah. At, really? ta- at certain times of the year when they all congregate, wow. there can be 100,000. That's insane. Yeah. I didn't some know of the it big, got that big. Some of the big Arctic herds, um, I mean, they don't all get in one place at one time, but they're, they are recognized as a herd. Uh, they get into the hundreds of thousands. Mm. They're very cyclic. The population goes up and down. But, um, you know, they're in, they're in certain places. And if they're not where you are, you're in the Sahara Desert. Then when they show up, it's like the Serengeti Plain. I mean, all of a sudden, there's caribou everywhere. You step outside, you hear the antlers all over the, the valley. If it's like in October when they're rutting. Wow. You hear the wolves howling, ravens croaking. It's like, what the hell happened? I hadn't heard anything for the last two months. And all of a sudden. Look at that. Oh, my God. Yeah. We're looking at uh, an enormous pack of caribou. What do they call them? They call them packs? Herd. Herd? Enormous herd of caribou. Look at all those. Yeah, it's in the summer. Now, in the summer, they're up on the north side. Usually. God, that's insane. It's so big. It's delicious I've, meat, huh? I've sat there at the cabin looking out at the lake and caribou walking across the lake, moving all the time, and I estimated at one moment I could see 800 on the lake. Wow. Yeah. A lot of caribou. Like the way I hunt them sometimes is to run around out there on the lake with them. Really? Yeah. Like, um, can you pull up a picture on Facebook or you can't do that? There's, yeah. there's one of me well, running in it, a yeah. caribou herd. Uh, in your nut section? Why, why it's you? right on the front page there where it's like uh, the pictures that you can leave up all the time. What do they call them? Not in the note section. No, it's right on the... You ran with them, and that's how you were hunting them? Echo chasing the call. It, I told you how I used to study a lot of anthropology. Mm-hmm. I used to listen to um, anything that I could hear about how people used to live in the old days, and especially the Inuit and people living up north. There was this, uh, this anthropologist, Austin Balixi. Um, he made some films back in the 1960s, the Net Silic people, the Net Silic Eskimo series, it's called. It's fascinating. He went up uh, Boothia Peninsula in northern Canada and filmed people that still knew how to do things in very primitive ways. And one thing I learned from those films was how they would hunt caribou. And the way these people would hunt caribou is there'd only be, you know, a few hunters. They'd build the little stone, the nooksooks they call them. It's like a scarecrow, make a line going down toward the lake so it looks like people. Then the few hunters would move around and they would use their voice and they'd yell and they'd echo their voice around and confuse the caribou and chase them into a lake that way. They could use their voice to get them down there and then one guy in a kayak could overtake the caribou and spear them. It's amazing. But you were by yourself. Yeah, but this is something you can use by yourself. You can use this technique of using your voice to confuse caribou and herd them where you want them to go. You echo Mm -hmm. out on the lake if they're caribou, it's wide open. They can see me half a mile away, and they'll go out in the middle of the lake in the day and stand around out there. If I try walking up to them a few hundred yards away, they might just take off, yell as loud as I can yell, and project my voice over to an island or, or shoreline, depending on where I am, and it'll bounce back, and they'll stop, and they'll run straight back at me. Wow. I've had him come running by me where Trisha was like, oh, my God, she thought I was going to get run over. She was filming once, and I could hear her when I watched the video, and she's like, oh, I think he's going to get run over. You know, she was like really worried. <laughs> you see that picture there, Jamie? I can't find it. Uh, it's, it's right on the – I'll pop it up so you can see. Yeah, scroll up to the top. Right there, the upper leftmost picture. This? Yeah. Okay. Trisha took that picture. Wow. So now, those you. caribou – those caribou, they were running away from me before this picture was taken. And I screaming and hollering, 
echoing my voice off the shoreline, and they turn around and run back. And I do it many times. I, I had these wow. caribou run back and forth like five, six times. I could stay within 50 yards of them a lot of times just by yelling as loud as I could. You look really close right there. Yeah. Well, Trisha thought I was going to get, you know, trampled. And so this is how you hunted them? This by is a technique I've used for hunting, but on this particular day, I was just demonstrating it. Oh. <laughs>